Dear folks, well, two days have nearly passed and I feel no ill effects as yet from the cooking here as you might expect I would. The first night we started learning the songs and cheers. Dr. Cutton, Dean Kelgren, and Dean Howlett address us too. After that, we had a campfire and marshmallows. It sure was plenty cold too. Just about everyone nearly froze the first night. Everett Emil Hankey, Freshman Camp, September 14th, 1933. During Colgate in the 1930s, freshmen had many traditions to uphold, songs to learn, cheers to learn, and green beanies to wear. They learned that they could not wear corduroys or walk off campus paths, and they had to shovel the snow off the football field. Each year, one third of the freshmen had to spend four days at Camp Colgate on Lake Moraine. There they bonded and learned what it meant to be a Colgate student while bridging the gap between high school and college. This lighthearted and informal orientation was not to last. In the late 1930s, orientation became more inclusive as it was shifted from Camp Colgate to a freshman week on campus. The structure of this week remained relatively similar, however. This week is devoted to registration, physical examination, psychological tests, recreational activities, and a series of lectures by members of the faculty. Still, they also had to learn the songs and traditions of the school. World War II changed orientation even more. Freshmen needed to know how they'd be involved in the war and not necessarily the words to the Colgate marching song. The focus became on training and quickly graduating students so that they could serve overseas. By 1943, most of the new students entered the Colgate Flight School and not the university. Because students entered at different times in July, April, and September, the students could not necessarily adjust to the traditional freshman week. Orientation changed depending on which group of students were entering the school at which times. As the war came to a close, the administration had to figure out how to return back to a normal school life. The students needed a support system after the war, but also needed to turn their attentions towards their intellectual futures. The experimental Colgate Plan of 1946 was developed over the years. The Colgate Plan also helped provide tools for advanced work in a time when the administration did not know what was to become of the liberal arts education when Colgate students came back from the war. This plan paved the way for the new orientation to take root. Now, instead of going to camp for a week, students listened to speeches from faculty, learned how to use the library, and met with faculty advisors. The cheers returned to the campus with the students, but now Camp Colgate was reduced to a single campfire one night. The spirit of every class starts with their integration into the school. Orientation changed fundamentally around World War II. It went from lighthearted bonding to a nurturing, academically focused environment. The effects can still be felt today. But no beanies.